Hello again. The news that in 2030 the sale of petrol driven cars will be banned in the United Kingdom sounds to some like the death knell for the natural order of things. How can you imagine driving some novelty item that doesn't use an internal combustion engine? In fact, electric cars were far more popular than those powered by petrol at one time and it wasn't until the First World War that the internal combustion engine really came into its own. Before then, automobiles were more likely to be powered by steam or electricity. When personal cars began to become available in the 1890s, the petrol-driven engine was a novelty. Uh, cars with engines like that were unreliable, dirty, smelly and noisy and also they were thought to be dangerous. Nobody wanted them really. Steam engines and electricity were by comparison clean, safe, efficient and cheap. At the dawn of the century in 1900, 80% of the cars on the streets of America were not petrol driven. 40% were using steam engines, 38 were electric and just 22% had internal combustion engines. It's instructive to look at the land speed record at this time. The land speed record was the highest speed attained by a person not travelling in a train, which really meant someone driving a car. In 1898, the land speed record was 39.24 miles an hour. The following year, it had reached 65.79 miles an hour, and by 1902, it was a brisk 75 miles an hour. The first two of these records be made by electric cars and the last one in 1902 by a steam powered automobile. Petrol driven cars were simply nowhere in the list of um, fast vehicles. The best selling car in America in 1900 was the Columbia Electric Runaround which was incidentally the first car in America ever to exceed sales of a thousand. The first electric hearse began offering, um, I won't say offering lifts, began conducting um, funeral processions in Buffalo, New York in 1900. The first funeral um, that it took part in, there were no fewer than 14 electric cars in the cortege. In England, electric cars were even more popular. In 1897, a fleet of electric taxi cabs was launched, which proved very popular with those travelling around London. The yellow and black cabs were quickly named hummingbirds because of the sound their motors made. With electric headlamps, they were the absolute height of modernity in Victorian London. By the year of Queen Victoria's death in 1901, electric cars had become the only way to travel for the wealthy. At the end of the year, the City and Suburban Electric Carriage Company published a list of some of those who had bought their cars. Queen Alexandra, the consort to Edward VII, the Dowager Empress of Russia, Marchioness of Ripon, Duke of Sutherland, the Earl of Derby. The list of noble names was an extensive one. In fact, the City and Suburban, because Queen Alexandra was driving one of their cars, was able to put the royal coat of arms on their note paper by appointment to Her Majesty Queen Alexandra. The electric cars on the market at that time had specifications which would do very well today for city travel. They had a top speed of 25 miles an hour, but in Edwardian London as today, I mean, there's seldom much chance to travel much faster in crowded streets. They had a range of 80 miles before the batteries needed to be recharged which meant that they could also be used for journeys out of town if necessary. It was the City and Suburban Electric Carriage Company which built the world's first multi-storey car park in Denmark Street in London's Soho district. This seven-storey structure had electricity laid on and cars left there overnight could be recharged. 
what happened to the electric car? Why did it vanish? It was really simple. A lack of readily available electricity. In Edwardian England, only 2% of homes had electricity. This meant that only the more wealthy could operate such a car. Walter Bursley, the man who launched the fleet of electric taxi cabs, was so frustrated at the lack of charging points for his vehicles, he invested a huge sum in building his own power station. This bankrupted him and the electric cabs vanished from the streets of London. By the First World War, petrol-driven cars were more reliable and they didn't depend upon having a supply of electricity to run. The discovery of huge new deposits of oil brought the price of petrol down as well, which meant that the writing was on the wall for electric cars. In America, they'd only ever been used as runabouts in the city, but as properly surfaced roads, tarmac surfaced roads, began to um, connect cities and towns, people wanted cars which could travel further and faster so they could drive from town to town. Petrol was far more suited uh, to that role than the electric cars. It's a shame, really, because the revolution in transport that we're currently looking at so very nearly happened before the First World War. <laughs>